Uh, it's it's really cool because short range weapons work very very well on this map as, as well as mid range weapons. You don't want only short range weapons. You need a couple of those mid range to lock down and assist in the team fights. But short range weapons are really really nice on this map. Uh, again, we see the Luna Blaster coming out. There's actually some oh three yeah. four. Uh oh. We are, we Justin, are unfortunately, Justin, didn't yeah. see. So we're probably going to be replaying this, I'd assume. Yeah, it looks like they're just going to stop playing. So we're going to be replaying this match, getting this lobby back for you guys. This does give us a good look at what weapons they're going to be bringing in. Red Ink bringing a lot of mid to long range weapons in. They're only going to be relying on the Luna Blaster for their short range aggression. They, uh, in addition to that, have the Dually Squelchers, which received a bit of a, of a buff in the most recent patch. I think that was 1.4. The Heavy Spotling Deco, so they're, they're gonna have those bubbles to put over by each of the zones to pop whenever they feel like. And then a scoped splatter shot, or a, a splatter scope, pardon me, um, that is gonna have that Stingray for them. So they will still have that Stingray weapon at their disposal. Um, and it's gonna be a nice combination of different specials that can not only rely on uh, painting the tower, but also just be that aggressive play. And we're seeing a, a very fun little running competition here from the members of Red Ink. So, can we, can we shout uh, out Zar really quick for this fantastic cinematic display? <laughs> uh, shout out Zar just in general for being the camera person for this entire event and doing a fantastic job with it. But the cinematic view of watching Tidavid here as they uh, rally their teammates to try and run around this pillar here. And that is going to be a quote unquote win. Uh, it's not going to count on the scoreboard, but it will go over to Red Ink as we get the real game one going and see if we can make sure Evie Justin stays in the lobby this time. So we have a fair four. The LAN adapter plugged in. Apparently the yes. internet cable came unplugged. That's hilarious. <laughs> but on the side of... Uh, I can't even remember their name now. It's Red Ink and... Uh, Envision. Envision. There we go. I, I had the wrong bracket up. So uh, Red Ink and Envision. Envision really had a much more conventional composition for Black Billy. They had two splatter shots, which of course is going to give them those splashdowns for each of the zones. In fact, they could activate them in tandem and cap the zones... Uh, at the same time, giving them control. Um, and then they also had that tri slosher, which of course fell out of favor for the most part after the first patches of the game, but it can still be a very powerful weapon. I think it's one that's pretty underrated right now. The burst bomb with that instant detonation can be so nice for painting the zone or just getting away if you get too far into the enemy territory. And then it kind of takes the place of the in zap as far as being that ink armor weapon. It's going to help them win those 1v1s a lot better. And that's rounded out by that mid range weapon that you said is so nice to have, which is the sloshing machine. Again, that weapon's so viable at all weapon types or all range uh, types because they have that stingray at their disposal along with the main weapon itself. Right. And the thing about the tri slosher that I'm actually interested in. Uh... It's, it's really interesting picking the meta right now because it is a 210 point charge and it doesn't charge as fast as the end zap. So if you pick the tri slosher, it's really because you want that slosh effect. You want the burst bombs for the pressure. It's really because you think on the current map and mode, it's going to do a better job than the end zap because it doesn't charge ink armors as fast. It doesn't paint as well. And uh, I don't know. It's a very interesting pick that a lot of these teams actually decide to go for the tri slosher right now. Yeah, a lot of slosher players forced to kind of switch over to the sloshing machine, but uh, Envision really working to make sure that they have two at, on, at their disposal here. Red Ink going to go down. Multiple oh. kills happening here. Saf that is going to grab a kill onto T-Ice, um, and they're going to try and maintain control of these zones here. They're being attacked pretty heavily. Nice kill nice. there on the Luna Blast. That was a use perfect of usage. Down. Yeah, perfect very, usage. Very, very good use of the splash. They down. got caught right in the 55 minimum damage uh, area of effect here that the splashdown delivers and Cronia gonna pop these bubbles as well only gonna use them on one zone get a kill on EB Justin in the process so that's the tri slosher the potential ink armor down and it's gonna be a nice recovery here by Envision or by Red Ink rather as Envision tries to get back into the zones yeah so Red Ink definitely had a very very good job pushing Envision out of the zones there uh they, they got the penalty so there's there's the penalty up on the board for Envision they didn't quite capture control of the zones uh for too long they're only down to 94 they're looking to make it so though as they do finally get control of these zones. Now it's up to Envision to be able to push it back in here, which looks like they're doing a pretty good job of right now. And the Stingray's coming up. They got to stay alive here. And uh, it's pretty much up to Red Ink to hold this defense right now. They're, they're playing from a pretty huge disadvantage with Envision already being down to 54, but it looks like they're doing it pretty nicely. Oh, and as I say, that three players drop. Okay. Yeah, beautiful double kill there with the Stingray. That's exactly what it's meant to do. When the enemy team groups up like that, which Red Ink did, it can be such a devastating special because with that extra range, there's really not too many places 
places you can go if you're already damaged by it uh, in order to stay alive. So beautiful job there. Uh, Redding still able to maintain mostly control of these zones here. And of course, uh, with their varied weapon comp, they're able to excel at all ranges, which is so nice. I think Envision's having to try and work their way around it. But Envision still is with the lead here. I think they are using their specials very effectively. They're saving them for the right time, especially those splashdowns on the splatter shot. It can be so tempting to just pop them when you get into a little bit of trouble, but you really have to try and save it. Unfortunately, again, we see a disconnect. The tri slosher EB Justin, going to be disconnected from the match. Gotta, so Envision will be the going with a 3v4 adapter. once again. You need to tape the cords to the adapter so it doesn't come apart. <laughs> That's the new strat right now. That's the tournament safety strat. Yeah, the, the outside of the game strategy. So again, another beautiful kill there. Uh, that's going to be on Tidivit once again with that splashdown. So, so unfortunate that this is happening in the bronze bracket finals. That's going to be a huge boon for Red Ink. But as I say that, Envision still holding on. Yeah, they have the good lead job. and they've gotten to 30. So it's still very likely that they could be able to hold on with only two minutes remaining in this game and take game one, even being a player down now. And for the people who may not know, they already got their replay in the match when Justin disconnected earlier, so they don't get the opportunity to actually replay this map. It is going to be a 3v4 for the remainder. They do have the lead right now, although Red Ink does have control. They've got map control as well. Uh, they've got their work cut out for them to actually push back in right now, but it's completely up to them. It's a 3v4. They need to try and do what they can here. they got to get that penalty refreshed as soon as they can before they lose this lead. Yeah, Jex trying to pop the stinger and get whoever was camping out on the pillar. A couple members going down, both splatter shots dying, and Jex is way too far behind the action, so this likely will be a retake of the lead, this time for Red Ink. But if they can stop them and give them another penalty, there still is the option here for Envision to try and take this one back. A minute and 13 seconds left to go. Saf is going to find a nice kill there onto Cronia, looking for the double. They're being pretty heavily pressured by two members, though. So Ray will claim credit for that kill on the Dually Squelchers, looking for another one as well. The splashdown going to be expended. They'll get the kill. They lose the control at six, so there still is a chance here for them to give them a penalty. Three it's members in total are down. Only one is alive, but that should do it. A close battle. Oh, boy. Stopped at uh, one. Uh, oh, he goes down. That's, that's oh, going to be it. Okay. It was worth a try. Beautiful effort there from Envision. They had the early lead. They were looking great. The unfortunate just Super disconnect. unfortunate. Yeah, and that is going to be the first sucks. game going to Red Ink. It really does uh, result in a bad situation here for Envision. But... If EV Justin can stay here for game number two, they should be able to tie this setup at one. We'll have to see. No, absolutely. We saw Envision play very, very well in that set. And if they didn't have that disconnect, I think they probably, oh, I, I think they definitely would have taken it. Um, but I think they have it in them to actually take it back here and go 2-1. I, th I think Envision can beat Red Ink, but uh, Red Ink is, is definitely playing very, very strong. Um, I don't know how they're handling that victory. I don't know if they're if they're happy about it, if they've got the momentum coming off of it. Uh, but for the, for the most part, I think they'll take the advantage. You know, when you're in when you're in a tournament like this, sure, you'll take the free point. Generally, I think Envision is using their specials a lot better and then Red Ink. They're being a lot more coordinated with them, especially because they're the splashdown for the most part. The two Splattershot users are using those at the right time. They're getting picks with them. Uh, and if they're not doing that, then they're just capping a zone freely, which is so nice. They get that map control under their feet. They're able to maneuver to a safe position to try and take somebody out after using that splashdown. And Red Ink, with their large berry composition, will have to work pretty hard to coordinate themselves as a team because... Uh, they have short, mid, and long-range weapons. They can't exactly be, quote-unquote, pushing in at the exact same time. The sniper is going to have to stay back. The heavy spotlight deco is going to have to sit, uh, stay back and try and get that map control. And they're going to have to rely on their shorter range weapons to get those early picks while the uh, the longer range weapons either stay back from afar and try and get people or just w work on layering in map control in the case of somebody like a heavy spotlight deco. Yeah, see, the thing with bringing a mid to long range centric team comp into a map like this is that you kind of need to get that early lead and you need to hold it. Uh, when, when you bring when you bring weapons that can't win the easiest 1v1s, if, they, if you get pushed by a splatter shot and you already have a disadvantage, uh, it's going to be difficult on a small map like Black Valley Skate Park because of those splatter shots and, you know, maybe like the NSAP, 52 Gal, et cetera, et cetera, uh, are so strong. If you can't win those early 1v1s with, with someone up in your face, that's a huge disadvantage to be at just in the team comp already. So I think you need to be able to bring more close range weapons or at least longer range weapons that can deal with a 1v1 with like a splatter shot, for example, uh, if you want to be able to push back into the zone here. Of course, having those long range weapons makes it really easy to hold uh, a capture be able to, to be able to hold the zone. But it's it's when you get locked out that you're going to start having some troubles.
Keep in mind that this is still a best of three, so Red Ink one game away from being able to take this Bronze Bracket Championship. Of course, while this match is going on, the third place match is happening between Just for the Halibut and Oathkeeper. We will have scores for you whenever they appear. Uh, so far, nothing yet. But it looks like our next map and mode will be Tower Control on Port Mackerel. Haven't gotten to see Port Mackerel that much in this tournament. It's not a map that I'm particularly a fan of, but some weapon types definitely excel on this map and mode combination. I think what Red Ink brought with them is going to be very devastating on a map and mode like this one for Tower Control, especially. The sniper can set up right in front of those hallways and get some beautiful snipes, keep those hallways free of enemy players. And then once they have control of the tower, set up on it, do some right peeking on it, and let their teammates push forward and try and get some kills before the enemy team even gets to the tower but envision with their short range composition and with uh if they bring in a sloshing machine of course they will have a stingray this is one of the best maps in general for stingray so i'll be interested to see how many each team decides to bring with them to tower control here yeah definitely uh the, the thing about the team comps right now is that i think this one might favor it a little bit more on the side of red ink uh long range weapons definitely do a lot of a better job on port mackerel than they do on black belly skate park and I think Red Ink is going to have a little bit of a boost from that. They did like running those long range weapons. If that's kind of their deal, if they like those long range weapons, it's going to work out here a lot better for them. And, and there you go. You have the Dooley Squelchers, the Heavy Splatling, and the Charger. And that's going to, it's going to work out for them a lot better on this map than it would on anywhere else. And uh, I think that's good. I think they're going to have a better shot on this map. Although we do have the 96 Gal as well as the Jet Squelcher coming out on the side of Envision. It's trying to counteract that. So good counter picks here. And uh, this is going to be a good match. I'm excited to see this one. Yeah, by the same token, as you mentioned here, the Custom Jet Squelcher, one of the newest weapons brought into Splatoon 2, going to be coming out on the side of Envision here. That's going to give them that ever important Stingray along with the Heavy Splatling, which has also built it up and is going to pop it here. Two down already on the side of Envision. So that's going to be the tower uh, continuing to push here if Ice will get on it. And, it, and they will to try and keep it going here. Of course, this is a map where you definitely don't want to get backed up into your spawn because it can be incredibly difficult for the enemy team to just keep your spawn camp. But it looks like Envision's done a wow, great a job. Bomb. The Luna's the last one still alive. They get a great bomb kill, but the tower's going to reset back to mid, and unfortunately, they'll go down. So Envision, a nice comeback from them. Yeah, I'd like to talk about, just, just really quickly here, the, the team composition meta for Port Mac. Oh, yeah. Everybody knows that Stingrays are really strong here. And so there, there's kind of two ways you can go about it. You can take a bunch of Stingrays yourself. You can take like two Stingrays, maybe even three Stingrays on tower control. And you can just try and make it work. And you know, you might be fighting the other team with a bunch of Stingrays if they have the same mentality. Another way to do it is maybe just have like one Stingray and then take like some Ink Storms and have very, very aggressive weapons. Uh, and you, you can just kind of push out the enemy Stingrays, make sure it's difficult for them to actually stay alive while using the Stingrays. Every time they pop it, you just take them out. And th there's a lot of different ways that you can actually handle this map and especially this mode uh, with your team comp. It looks like both of these teams have opted to take the kind of lots of Stingrays route. They both have uh, at least two Stingrays, uh, if I'm not wrong. Yeah, they both have two Stingrays. And because of that, it's going to be just a big laser war. This is going to be just a laser show, and it's, it's actually going to be really interesting. We're probably not going to see too many huge pushes from each team because of those Stingrays are just going to stop them. But uh, right now, it is Envision who had the lead at 65 points. Yeah, not only that, but you can also bet that at least one team is going to be bringing a splatter shot into the mix. The splatter shot is one of the most played weapons in the meta right now, so the splashdown is going to be something that you're also going to have to contend with, not only on the tower, but also if you get backed up into your spawn. It can just be a great zoning tool uh, in that regard. We're going to see it here come up from Staff and Tim. It's going to go down because of it. A beautiful double Ooh, kill nice. as well on the Ray with the bomb. Looking for the Ooh. triple kill on the Cronia, but we cannot find it. Evie Justin, though, will clean that one up. So that's going to force a three down situation. However, the sniper doing their job, staying out of the action and staying alive. They do have that Stingray, but Evie Justin is looking for them. So if they can stay alive, they will have something to combat any potential push of the tower from Envision. Right, and it's exactly as I said, if the enemy team is running a bunch of Stingrays, you need to be able to push up. The, the thing with this map is that Stingrays are so strong because of the long lanes. And if you get hit by a Stingray, if a Stingray is trying to kill you on this map, the worst thing you could do is back up. Because when you back up, your movement is extremely predictable. They're going to know where you're going. What you need to do is you need to push them and try and kill them. Not, It's not one of those situations where you can win by being defensive. You need to be aggressive and take out the Stingrays. Because if, if you back up, that's exactly what the Stingray wants you to do. They're using it to pressure you. They're using it to push you back and try and get the kill. If you can push them and be aggressive, that's how you're going to win this matchup. 
And you, there's a couple of specials you can say that about. The Inkjet, as we've talked about a couple times, has been much more so a zoning special. So uh, if, if you're being pressured by an Inkjet, one of the best things you can do might be just to try and take them out uh, and just kind of duck out of their way until you can get close enough with your weapon, whatever it is, to try and kill them. Because if they allow you to, if, if you're allowed to push back, then they just get even more map control and they have an opportunity to push that objective even further. So Jex here, again, using the Stingray, I like to mention that with the Stingray, one of the biggest detriments of it is of course that you don't get to use your main weapon while using it so you're really locked into that stingray so if somebody finds you there's really not much you can do and it takes a lot of hits for the stingray to kill somebody which is why it's so good at long range but really terrible at close range absolutely and it, it was exactly like i just said ray on the dually squelchers did such a good job just pushing that stingray again you don't want to back up when you're being stingrayed on this map you want to push them you want to go forward and try and catch them while they can't use their main weapon to take you out and red ink actually taking a pretty okay lead there 56 points to the 58 of envision and uh, that's going to give them a little bit of room to work with. There's only a minute left in this match. And, you know, 56 points isn't the best lead. But when there's so many Stingrays in the, in the match, that's probably the best you're going to get. Yeah, and also just the fact that there's only about 30 or so seconds left. A beautiful kill there as well. That's going to uh, force at least one kill there as we see the light show continue here. Ice going to be on the losing end of that. So three down on the side of Red Ink. A beautiful opportunity here for Envision to come out. Jack's going to be popping the Stingray and getting a lot of hit markers. Finally, a kill there onto Ray. And that will be the checkpoint. Not quite the lead yeah and but there it is got the it. Okay. lead with 12 seconds left to go so it's going to take a herculean effort from redding to try and not only get on the tower but also get all the way to that 38 <laughs> yes. mark Jax is just dancing around on the tower now somehow still alive how's he doing this this isn't crazy he's got the armor armor two. Kills. three of them on the tower how is Jax alive he got finally goes down well. three players down on the side of red ink and Envision's going to take that one very nicely. Some fantastic play from Jext at the end there. That was that was remarkable. I'm now I stay alive there. But now it's going to be 1-1. Envision versus Red Ink going into game three for the bronze bracket finals. Dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. That was their motto there. And they were able to stay alive. The custom Jet Squelcher also having a phenomenal performance wow, 21. with 21 KA. EB Justin also not only not disconnecting, but getting 16 KA in the process with that 96 scale, providing that ink armor to allow them to win those 1v1s a little easier and that shows a lot of resilience there from envision having to face a dc and still coming away with the victory uh taking the lead in the last minute of the game and forcing a game three so now for this bronze bracket championship we move on the mode will be rainmaker and the map i believe is going to be snapper canal so again a map we've just seen an umpteenth amount of times <laughs> seen on this so day this i don't so know why we've times. seen it so much but uh, it's, as you said it's the newest new map in splatoon 2 it was not part of splatoon 1 so people are still getting used to it but uh, i think red ink with their weapon comp that they brought in is going to have a pretty decent shot to take this thing of course if they continue to bring in things like a sniper and a heavy splatling whether it's the deco version or not they should have a decent shot to win this but because it's rainmaker i think rainmaker as a whole um bolsters aggressive play even more so because you have to get right in the face of the rainmaker in a lot of cases to take them out so we'll have to see if envision's tough tight and aggressive play is going to win out over the sort of measured, patient uh, play of Red Ink that they like to bring into no matter uh, what the map and mode combination is. Yeah, so as I've said, I feel like five times already today, Snapper is a huge map and every single part of it is important, even more so on Rainmaker. Uh, because pretty much every single route that you can take the Rainmaker, whether it's the left, the right, the far right, the center, uh, pretty much every single one of these routes are actually very, very good. There's a lot of cover. They're all very safe. Uh, some of them might take a bit longer than others, but they trade off of that time for safety. And so uh, because of that, just having control of the entire map is really, really important here. And uh, it's, it's all about the weapon comps. You need some long range. You need some painting weapons uh, in order to be able to take this map cleanly. Yeah, you see a little bit of everything on this map, as I've mentioned. You see ramped surfaces, you see flat surfaces, you see a bunch of different elevations. Of course, you start up at the very top elevation and then go down to the lowest one in mid, which is where the Rainmaker is going to spawn. There's even a bit of water on this map. We, we already saw somebody fall into the water on this map, so we'll have to see if that happens once again in this Game 3. This will be deciding who is the Bronze Bracket Champion, so let's find out who it's going to be between InVision and Red Ink. Taking a look at their weapon comp, Red Ink feeling very confident with what they've brought with them. The only real change I'm seeing on the side of Envision is that Splattershot Pro instead of the 96. That's one of the biggest changes anyway. Uh, and that's going to give them that Ink Storm, which is really nice to have on a map like this one. Yeah, definitely. See, see the thing about the uh, the Ink Storm is that it's, it's kind of got like a different use on this map. Normally you use the Ink Storm to kind of push people out and try and take some turf at the same time. Uh, in, in this map, 
the Ink Storm isn't really that amazing at actually taking turf. And uh, wow, Envision actually a very, very good first fight. They're just going to run that Rainmaker and get as many points as they can, which is a good decision to make uh, when you win that first team fight. Uh, the, the Ink Storm is like, like while it is good. Wow. Here, oh, Justin. What the whoa, heck? Whoa, 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 whoa. He's not disconnecting Justin. this time. He's making up for that game one. Double They're going to come. They're trying to make it a knockout. Oh, and They're that's going to be it. The quickest game three that I've ever seen. Envision doing a really good job. Justin with that huge triple at the end of the match. And that's pretty much what won them the game there. So, wow. Envision showing, uh, you know, we had that disconnect, but don't worry about it. We're still going in. We talked about the Splattershot Pro being such a nice weapon to have. EB Justin, after disconnecting at the start, really proving that they deserve to be there, not only with that performance on the 96 in Game 2, but coming out with a double kill effectively with the same bullet with the Splattershot Pro, and then following that up with a triple, that's going to easily allow the Rainmaker Carrier, that might have been Jex, to just plant it on the pedestal and come away with the victory here. So Envision pulling off the reverse sweep, winning two games in a row, and they are your Bronze Bracket Champions for g7 fantastic job to them really good stuff the bronze bracket was no pushover but they got it uh seemingly looking like a pushover although red ink did play pretty strong so fantastic job red ink to be second place in the bronze bracket of g7 lots of really good tournaments in here so that's definitely a title that you should be proud of uh good stuff again to envision fantastic play in that last game that was really quick and really fast uh they had it on lockdown uh, coming up next, we are going to be moving into our silver bracket. Uh, I believe we're looking at some semifinals matches and then into the finals. And uh, that is all. That is going to be all for today. Uh, we're going to watch out this silver bracket finals. And then uh, again, top 12 guys is going to be all tomorrow. Uh, top 12 of the entire bracket that's going to be happening entirely.